you're trying to tell me now I know it's a, I have it stretched up the way but even if I bring it down you're trying to tell me that, that the shadow of this mountain is going to be lost in these little tiny bumps here in relation to that mountain and won't make it to there is that your is that what you is that what you're trying to tell me Brian's logic has recently made three videos just asking one question where's the shadow He's been given the answer, of course, but does that make any difference? So what I hope to do in this video is to use Google Earth's elevation profile together with GeoGebra to establish where it was the shadow was expected to reach when the sun was at its lowest. I'll also use the same geometry to demonstrate why it was TFE could only see a crisp, clean shadow line at the base of the mountain. But before we get a brief recap of Brian's three videos, let me show you what I've got going on here. First you'll notice I've managed to zoom into the tracks in the snow and I've marked out the ski way for the ski planes to take off and land on, the route to the blue ice runway and the main loop. This pin marks the highest point I could find on Mount Rossman and it's 1,381 meters. Here's the TFE observation location dubbed halfway point by ALE. We know the coordinates of this from drone footage and from photograph metadata. Halfway point is about 1.4 kilometers from the south edge of the skiway and it's about 5.3 kilometers to the peak of Mount Rossman. This marker shows how far the shadow is expected to reach, which is about 2.6 kilometers from both the peak and TFE's halfway point. This yellow marker is for shadow cutoff and I'll come back to that in a little bit. And this section is the elevation profile for the red path from Mount Rossman to the halfway point. And if I run along it, I can just confirm these markers. So first of all, we'll check max shadow length, which is about here. So that's 264 kilometers and an elevation of 761 meters. The shadow cutoff, that is about here, that's 1.16 kilometers and an elevation of 803 meters. And the halfway point where the TFE participants were is over here at 5.32 kilometers from Mount Rossman. So if I want to measure the elevation of the sun via the shadow of Mount Rossman, to measure an elevation angle to the sun of 13.4 degrees, right, when it's around the back of Mount Rossman here, then the shadow length would have to be over three kilometers. They definitely would have seen a long shadow to, this, to Mount Rossman. That's what I would reckon anyway. Whereas the shadow, the shadow, if they were two kilometers away, then the shadow would have to be over where they were at some point. So here you have the path from the up close to the very peak of the mountain coming down and to where they were the length of the path is 5.37 kilometers but that's if we're taking in the uh, the peak or the whole mountain but if you're coming from the base of the mountain that would be 3.78 kilometers the path is going to give us the elevation profile so you have the path starting here uh, coming right down that's 5.5 kilometers out to there but the distance from here right around there out to here is about 3.8 kilometers. You see, they got a they're claiming to have got a 13.4 degree angle to the sun at this distance. Let's just say the shadow only did come to what would be here. This would be the point, it'd be about 500 or so, 550 meters away from them. There's no way, there's the, there is the, there, there is the, um, there is the uh, point where the shadow would, let's just say if it only went that far, then there's no way that they could be here and not see that shadow. Now before we look at what GeoGebra can tell us, a quick word about the shadows we can see here on Google Earth. You'll notice that they're very long and no doubt they were taken at a different time of year when the sun was a lot closer to the horizon. You can just about make out the imagery date at the bottom and this one says 16th of February, which is very close to the date the sun starts setting again on Union Glacier. So what I've done here is I've plotted some data points from the elevation profile on a one-to-one -one scale. Here's the peak of Mount Rossman, and this is the TFE location, that halfway point. 
We know from MC Toon's sundial and Wes Wally's gyranometer that the sun was lowest when in the direction of Mount Rossman. Not at an altitude of 13.4 degrees as Brian mentions, but more like 13.25 degrees. What this means is we should be able to see the sun at this altitude from anywhere along this profile, as long as the mountain doesn't prevent us from seeing it. This is how TFE saw the sun. And this is where an observer would no longer be able to see it. The shadow falling short of the skiway by 1.2 kilometers. So why is it TFE witnessed a seemingly clean straight edge shadow at the base of the mountain and nowhere in between? Well, if I change the scale over from 1 to 1 to 4 to 1 in order to make the small changes in elevation more pronounced, we can then get a 2 meter observer at halfway point to sight up and over this small hill. Our observer cannot see anything beneath this line of sight and can only see shadow above this point at the base of the mountain. You're trying to tell me now. I know it's. Uh, I have it stretched up the way. But even if I bring it down, you're trying to tell me that the the shadow of this mountain is going to be lost in these little tiny bumps here in relation to that mountain and won't make it to there. Is that your? Is that what you? Is that what you're trying to tell me? So even if I raise the height of the mountain from one three eight one meters to fifteen hundred meters, the maximum shadow length would still fall short of the skiway and it would make no difference to what the TFE participants saw with regard to the shadow. So I'm going to wrap this one up here. I'll leave a download link in the description for the GeoGebra project, should you feel like having a play. Please leave me a thumbs up if you liked it, and don't if you're disappointed I didn't mention Eratosthenes. Either way, I'm happy. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.